Okay, so the last piece here is we're going to take this same data into ArcGIS Pro, and we're going to delve a little deeper and try to find where these uh, outages, these momentary outages from the vegetation is happening, and maybe we can make some proactive decisions about trimming the, the trees. We're going to use Pro, and we're going to use a space-time cube. Harry. Yes. So what you're looking at here is ArcGIS Pro, and the same hotspot analysis that I ran in that web viewer is available inside of ArcGIS Pro again. It's that idea of services oriented that Jack talked about. You create it once, you share it with everyone here. So what we want to do, though, is look at these outages in regards to space and time. So there's a free add-in that's available. Anybody can go download it called the Space Time Cube Explorer. And what this add-in will do is help you create a space time cube. So here is our space-time cube, and I'll go ahead and zoom into it. So what we're looking at here is every square, every cube represents a month. The more purple, the higher number of the outages. So here is um, one that has 5,911 outages in that one month happened in that location. Up here, again, same location in a different time frame in August, you can see that there were actually no outages. So this is what the space-time cube is showing us. So showing us time in vertical, and we're looking at the aggregation of the total number of outages. Now that, that add-in gives me this dialog box. This dialog box allows me to interrogate this space-time cube a little bit more. So if I wanted to only find areas that had a high number of outages, I can slide this slider up to something like almost 3,000. And now you can see that there's a very different picture that appears. In fact, something interesting just visually is going on. There seems to be a, a gap in the center. We see a lot of outages up high and a lot of outages um, down low. Now, we can continue just to play around with the raw counts, but one of the other things that was uh, available to us through the space-time cube explorer is the ability to look at this in a hotspot analysis. So here's that hotspot analysis, and immediately, immediately you see these patterns. What were we talking about happening early on in the year? Rain. And there's a lot of outages. There's momentary outages. But then you also notice as we go towards the August time frame, outages have been increasing, and we think that this is due to vegetation. So what we see here are the hot and the cold spots. There's a couple of other areas. If we look at like the oscillating hot spots, you can see nothing's going on, a lot of outages. Nothing's going on, a lot of outages. So this is an area that we may want to dive deeper into. And then finally, if we look at a new emerging hot spot, this is where nothing's been going on for a while, and suddenly outages have become prevalent. OK, here's the thing. What if right underneath this layer is another hotspot? I can't see it. I, I, right, I, could, I could do some filtering, but I want to get into this cube. I want to I find hotspots that may be two levels down. So how would I do that? Well, there's a new tool, or, well, there's a tool that we have uh, called Emerging Hotspot Analysis. So in our toolbox, I type in Emerging Hotspot. Here it is right here. So I can run this tool on my space-time cube, and it will give me a collapsed 2D layer of all of the uh, different bins that are inside of here. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we've taken that entire space-time cube and collapsed each one of those, those bins, each one of those little cubes, into a flat map. And what we have are many different categories of hotspots. We have some that are new hotspots, uh, intensifying hotspots, diminishing hotspots, and so forth. So we took that slice, and you see that there are two distinct points that appear on the map that are new hotspots. So let's go ahead and look at this one over here. I'll turn off that, and I'll turn on my imagery. So we'll see that again. Where did that hotspot go? 
there we go. So once I zoom in here, what we can see on this row of trees are telephone pole and electric pole um, shadows directly against this line of vegetation. And that's where that emerging hotspot was shown. So by using a space-time cube to explore data in 3D and over time, and then using that emerging hotspot to collapse it, we were able to find where our hotspots now becoming more prevalent than they were before. And we did not make this up. This data is all real. So that hotspot that appeared right here is a very good indicator that the trees in this area are hitting the power lines and actually creating a lot of those momentary outages. Right, so now we can uh, proactively send some crews out there, trim yeah. them, and try to cut down mm -hmm. on those momentary outages. Again, this wasn't scripted. We didn't know what we were going to find until we right. dropped the aerials in and looked at those emerging hotspots, and sure enough, we found the vegetation right up against the lines. Okay, so let's look at the review of the spatial analysis that we've done. ArcGIS provides you multiple ways to provide spatial analysis. You can explore data, again, proactively to discover insight. Um, we can do real-time data analysis, which is extremely important, especially to executives and managers. They want the latest data. Um, remember the language of spatial analysis and using that as a way to remember to do more analysis and spend as much time and effort analyzing it as we do managing it. Explain to others that you don't just make maps for a living, that you can do some analysis and help them make better decisions. Um, so we get that process, the vocabulary, and the benefits. And then we're not all working for electrical utilities, but I think you can grasp how analyzing large data sets like that can, can be useful, whether it's 311 data or you know, AVL data or your parking meter data or what have, it, what have you, crime data. We can look at it. So from the geo event to the geoanalytics insights and pro, we, we took the data through each one, each tool, and it, each one played its role in the anal analysis process.